This is Alan Karpik uh, with our, our Golden Black uh, Zoom. It's a birthday Zoom technically for Tim House, but he doesn't he doesn't want to remind you that he's only 35. <laughs> uh, but he was 35 on Saturday. I think we're going to air this on Monday or Tuesday, the 13th. But uh, and, and Mark Herman with us as well, uh, a, a Purdue athletic legend. Uh, I know we both lament the fact that it's been 40 years since he's played uh, on his. Uh, and run rough shot on that Ross A Stadium <laughs> turf. One of the great seasons uh, uh, in, in, from a quarterback. He left left Purdue as the NCAA's all-time passing leader, and of course, 1980, uh, a remarkable year. But 1978 and 79 weren't too, weren't too bad either. He took he led Purdue to three consecutive bowl victories. He was MVP in a record that will ne- maybe equal someday, but will never be broken. So at least three three consecutive and that, that uh, a very, very impressive. Tim House, uh, uh, the executive vice president and, and or executive, I want to make your, your titles right. He's the head of the job. Assistant, Purdue vice, Club. President. Assistant <laughs> vice president, senior associate athletic director. Uh, he also needs no introduction, but uh, guys, I want to start uh, uh, a little bit. Mark, it, Tim, Tim already probably asked you this in the interview process, but I want to know why uh, you, you, you go from Craner to, to uh, John Purdue Club and that opportunity there. What piqued your interest most about uh, getting this opportunity? Well, really, it was a no-brainer. Um, you know, I loved my time at Craner. I was a Craner grad. Uh, the opportunity to get back into Purdue and, and to kind of give back a little bit uh, into my major and to help those those students realize great opportunities and to uncover some things that uh, maybe would help them pursue a great career and help our faculty and help everything involved with Craner. But certainly in my, my rear view mirror was, uh, and, and maybe an opportunity to someday get back into athletics and, uh, and be a part of the John Purdue club, Purdue football, and, and to be able to maybe, impact that in some fashion and uh so yeah that that opportunity came about and couldn't be more thrilled um you know it's it's a great time with athletics uh, certainly not with the circumstances going on right now but i think the commitment from uh president mitch daniels on down through mike babinski and, and tim and and others around the program uh i just think it's a, a golden opportunity for me to hopefully come in and make an impact with our alums, our former players, my former teammates, all those concerned to help us build to a championship level. And, and I think uh, I've always, since my playing days and then on through being a fan, uh, you know, you strive for greatness and you want to see a great product on the field and you want to see the fans enjoying themselves and packing uh, raw aids. So all those things entered into a perfect time in, in my career to hopefully you know, make this a legacy and kind of be my swan song to help out, uh, particularly in the Ross Aid renovation project, but uh, more importantly, the program as a whole. And, and so I couldn't be more happy, more thrilled, and uh, just to, to work with our loyal, fantastic alums and, and former players to, to get this thing going in the, in the right direction. You know, Tim, uh, you had an opportunity, uh, you, you've, you've done a quick study of Purdue's a- athletic tradition and where a, a guy like Mark Herman uh, fits in, but he al- obviously fits in with your what you're trying to get done, and that is obviously to raise money, raise awareness, but raise, you know, build big things, so to speak. Uh, in that process, you know, what, uh, what uh, outside of maybe some of the things that Mark mentioned, what, what, what makes Mark such a good fit for your operation? Man, um... Well, Alan, I think asking me why Mark Herman's a good fit for our operation is like asking Jeff why George Karloftis is a good fit for Purdue football. <laughs> you know, you, you've got a, a five-star guy walking around West Lafayette, uh, who everyone knows and loves, and, um, and is a perfect fit to take your program to the next level. Of course, you're going to try to recruit him, you know. And um, it, w- with Mark – um, obviously, we, we talked about the history here as a player. Everyone um, 
knows and loves him from that time. Um, but then if you look at what Mark did throughout the rest of his life um, in business, uh, his comfortability in front of people, uh, the way he comports himself, uh, he's the consummate gentleman too. I mean, we sat down for lunch when we started talking about all this and you're like, golly, I mean, this is like the nicest guy I've ever met. And, and <laughs> yeah. So buttoned up and very professional. And, and I'm not just blowing smoke as Mark's sitting here. I mean, right. he's, he's a great representative of Purdue and it's such an important time for us. I mean, we're trying to, dream bigger about what Purdue football and particularly what Ross Aid Stadium can be. Well, if you look back, you know, through the annals of history of, of, of Purdue football, I mean, Mark was there during one of, if not the most impressive runs um, in program history. And then you couple that with all the experience. And again, it, it kind of becomes a no brainer. And then the fact that, you know, he was already on campus, already understood fundraising at Purdue um, and, and how to go about doing that both internally and externally Again, I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, you got George Carlottis right across the street at West Lafayette High School. You got Mark right across the campus. Let's get these guys on our team, you know. And um, so it, it's a no-brainer. And, and even in a short time and even in, in extenuating circumstances with COVID, I mean, Mark's just taking the ball and run with it, you know, and, and already been on the phone with folks. Obviously, people are excited to hear from Mark. Um, and I think Mark is really excited to tell them about the stadium and his endorsement of what the project means to a player or a potential player. Um, I think it, it resonates in, in a very special way. So we're, we're pumped about it. And it, again, kind of a no brainer, <laughs> you, you know? Yeah, Mark, you know, you go back in, in your day, I think you guys dressed in Mackey Arena, as I recall, <laughs> right, uh, yeah. your locker rooms, which were, you know, I think you had Nautilus equipment, which was a big deal at the time as well. Jim Young was a big, big believer and that still is. And now you look at a facility like the football performance complex and like what you'd like to do in, in Ross age stadium, it kind of blows your mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah as you mentioned, uh, we had minimal facilities and uh, you know, it was, uh, it was just all football. You know, we had to kind of live with universal machines and Nautilus equipment. And uh, if you look at me back in those days, I kind of avoided the weight program. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't the, the 6'4", 220 guy, uh, I, was, I was pretty slender. But no, all the facilities, the resources are, are, are certainly in place uh, to have a, a terrific program. And, and you, when you walk around and, and you're just going through these buildings and, and just seeing what's, what's available to our student athletes and, and to our, our staff, uh, it just, it does blow your mind. And yeah, we've got to parlay that into a great stadium and certainly, you know, when I was there, Alan, at the same time, uh, you know, we filled the place and it was electric and all that. But, you know, we've got to keep it uh, up to date. We've got to have those bells and whistles and we've got to be able to present a stadium that uh, uh, presents to a, a recruit that this is a legitimate, uh, you know, this is a place that we can really do some great things. So that's Tim and my focus going forward. And uh, we know that the fans are excited about those possibilities. Uh, tough circumstance right now, as we said, but when the time is right, we're gonna address those things and make this uh, you know, a competitive environment, a fan-friendly environment, and one that everybody uh, can be proud of. Yeah, Mark, I think you played games in, in front of 70,000 fans, record numbers, and of course, per, uh, Mackey, excuse me, Ross State Stadium's capacity has is, is come down some. But Tim, <laughs> look, at, look at all this. And uh, obviously there's challenges and we, we get that with, with what's going on with COVID-19. But t give us a little update of where you are. Obviously the Roman naming was, was, was huge and a great first step. And uh, depending on how things shake out with the football season, there'll be, some, there'll be an, uh, uh, certainly a dedication there. But tell me about first maybe the challenges that have gone on with COVID. But this is, this, this is still something that you have to stay in the trenches. Uh, and, and continue to move forward, uh, COVID or not? So, uh, to me, Alan, I, you know, at, while it, it, you could say that it's been a challenge, it's also presented a great opportunity for us to look inward and really position ourselves for how, how do we want our, our fans to see us? How, how do we, coming out of this, how do we want to position ourselves for success? And, you know, we've had to pivot a little bit in terms of, what we talk about with folks, what our tone and tenor is. Um, but it's been positive, to be quite honest with you, Alan. We've been able to say 
we've been able to really show people the value of their support right now more than ever before. And, and it's easier for them to understand, you know, and, um, and it's been actually really cool to see. I mean, for, for those of us who are on the phones, on the front line, talking to John Purdue Club members and prospective donors and John Purdue Club members, um, you're really getting to see the passion that exists in our fan base, um, you know, about what we're building and, 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 and the importance of, of Purdue football and basketball. I mean, let, let's not uh, forget about that. I mean, I, I think one thing we've learned being at home and social distancing and not being around other people is just how great it is to be in Ross Aid Stadium, just how great it is to be in Mackey Arena and to be on the same team with our friends and family and people who are nothing like us, but because they wear gold and black, we're best friends that day, you, you know, and getting to celebrate our young people and what they're accomplishing on and off the field. Um, so for us, it's, I, I would say, obviously there's challenges with the economy and we have to be sensitive when we're having conversations to the fact that some people, you know, I mean, we're bouncing from a conversation where one person's business is doing great or they were unaffected to someone might've lost their job or might've had to let go of employees and, and you have to be sensitive. And, and, and to be quite honest with you, that's a balancing act. But at the end of the day, um, it hasn't stopped us from being positive about what's going to happen with Purdue athletics coming out of this, you know, and, um, and the fact that we, there is still a tremendous need to get behind a athletics department that does it the right way. And that is doing everything possible uh, to compete for big 10 and national championships. And that, that's something we all signed up to be a part of for us. It, it's, it's not a matter of if that's still going to happen. It's just a matter of when, you know, and, and, and so it's been, uh, you know, sorry, long winded answer, but yeah. I think if, if there, it's, it's not always been easy, but I think it's still a really fun job to get on the phone and talk to people about how excited we are about everything that lies ahead for Purdue Athletics. I know Mark can speak to that, too. He's had some great conversations. Yeah, you look at that, Mark, and obviously your name and because of uh, your, your playing days, but also, like you said, like Tim said earlier, you know, obviously – it's not like you after you your your last days with the Indianapolis Colts that you uh, you you know been very active in the city of Indianapolis and other projects as well. Your, your business uh, pedigree is strong. But how what do you, you know? Tell me about those convers the initial conversations you've had, but also what you've drawn on to to, to outside of athletics that uh, will make you uh, make you successful in this opportunity. Well, like, like Tim mentioned, all, all the phone calls are different and uh, some have thrived, some have struggled. And, uh, but to the core, these are Purdue folks and, and they want great things for the university and for the football program and, and the chance to talk about some other things other than what they're going through right now, I think has been a, a spark of optimism for them. And, and I've had some really pleasant phone calls and very enjoyable about, you know, hey, I, I'm curious, what's the season going to look like? And what are you talking about as far as Ross said? What's that going to look like? And, you know, how's, how's my experience going to be different? Are my seats going to change? Is my vantage point going to change? Uh, what's, what's happening? And, and I, you know, I share those things. And, you know, I, I think everybody, you know, wants to see Purdue continue to elevate itself. And, um, you know, certainly – my first and for, first thing is talking about, hey, how you doing? How you getting through this? And we have appreciated your support over the years. Let's talk about going forward here and what we can do to keep us going and keep us competitive and keep us competing for championships. And, and therefore, the, the door opens up and then we, we get down to talking about uh, what it's going to look like. And I think you're just going to be thrilled with it. And, you know, at, at the timely point, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk about you're getting uh, your support in and how would it feel like you sitting in that stadium and looking around and saying, Hey, I was a part of this. I was a part of growing this stadium, uh, bringing in the bells and whistles and being able to say, this is, uh, this was, this was part of what I did here. And so I think that's a great feeling. And I, and I think it just, you know, we talk about, Hey, I watched you play or I grew up watching you play, or it makes me feel old watching you play. But, uh, uh, but no, everybody is, uh, you know, they've all got that common thread. We love the university. We get down to as many games as we can. Uh, you know, we wouldn't, we don't miss a week. And uh, uh, we just want to get back to uh, normalcy and, and, uh, and see where this thing's going to go. And, you know, whatever part I can play in it, that's, that's critical. But I say, we're, we're one. We're, we're Purdue alums, and we want great things for our university and our football and basketball program. 
And I know that you're not necessarily ready to share everything that's going on with, with, with the stadium project in terms of specifics, but maybe I'll, I'll start with you, Tim. Uh, give me one thing that you, that really in terms of a broad stroke or a specific item that's going to, that will go in that you, you know, that you'll like, we, we are seeing right now as of what, couple days ago the the video board is is on and it's as big it blocks the sun i think in west lafayette <laughs> but uh tell me about uh, you know what it, you know the tenor of the project what ross aid stadium is trying to be and maybe a, if there's a specific item that you that especially intr intrigues you sure alan and you're absolutely right that new video board is awesome i mean it's it's, it's going to be a huge enhancement um just in terms of the interaction with fans and ability to watch replays because what we're up against, I sat in a bunch of these focus groups. We're not up against people leaving us and going to another college's football games. We're up against them sitting in their living room and watching the game. Yeah. A lot of what we got was, well, the picture's so clear and it, and I can see more of the action and I can watch the replays. Well, now I can have the best of both worlds. You know, you can go sit in Ross aid stadium, be a part of the atmosphere, give our kids the energy and, and the support that they need, but then also, watch the replay as clear as day, you know, and that's the, I think it's the second or third biggest, but the clearest video board in college athletics. So um, we're, we're really excited about that. That is going to be a huge enhancement, but you, you talked about the tenor of the project. As succinctly as I could put it, we have the best home court advantage in college basketball because of what Mackey is. Yeah. So I think as a lot of us who've been fortunate to be a part of the project have thought about it, it's how do we create that in ross State Stadium? doesn't have to necessarily be the biggest stadium in college football. But what we can do is create a unique home field advantage. Uh, I think a big piece of that um, is moving people closer to the field, both end zones, you know, one being open uh, you know, with the south and the other one in the north being a little bit removed from the field. Um, you know, I think we lose some atmosphere there. Uh, I can't speak to the exact specifics of what the, the project's going to look like because the, the economy and everything could change that, to be quite honest with you. But I know that with what we've talked about up to this point and what I know we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make it a more intimidating place to play games. I mean, I remember going last fall to Kinnick to watch us play at Iowa mm -hmm. and thinking to myself, we could have just as good, if not better, in terms of an atmosphere. And that was a great atmosphere. I mean, they great. do an awesome job of being right on top of the field and really create advantage for Iowa football. We're going to look to do that at Purdue. I and mean, if I could really succinctly sum it up, we're going to look to create the intimidating home advantage that we have in Mackey in ross Aid Stadium. Uh, because we think our fans are our greatest attribute. They're passionate, they're loud, they're into it. I mean, if you're at the Ohio State game a couple of years ago, you saw the impact they had on that game. If we can just bring them that much closer to the action and amplify that impact, then I think that is going to directly equate to winning football for us, to be quite honest. And, and it's going to appeal to recruits, too. I mean, when you're feeling that intensity, when you're on your recruiting visit, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, you want to play in front of that if you're 17, 18 years old. So uh, there'll be all sorts of bells and whistles to make it um, – more fan friendly, a more enjoyable experience, uh, an experience that when someone comes to a Purdue game for the first time makes them say, hey, I, I want to come back because I, I enjoyed the hospitality that I received and that I got to be a part of. But most importantly, we want to create an atmosphere that is intimidating to play in and that creates wins for Purdue football. Yeah, Mark, what, 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 what stokes your fire when you look at the project? Well, uh, Alan, you remember when the North End Zone used to be yeah. such an intimidating presence and you know whether we're going into score or uh, opposing teams coming out of that we want that through the entire stadium we want the fans on top of uh the field uh we want that south end zone to be uh, an intimidating presence as well and we'll probably move the students uh, more towards that direction have the band there as well and so uh you know tim was right uh kinnick stadium can be a tough place to play and uh, we want that week in and week out for, uh, for our uh, opposing teams coming in. And, you know, it, uh, when it really gets loud in there and you can hear yourself thinking the right tackles jumping off sides and everybody's uh, discombobulated on their offense, uh, that's what you want. Uh, you want it to be noisy and intimidating and distracting and all those things. You want that to be a real home field presence for your, for your squad. And, and uh, that's going to only help. Uh, recruits coming in will sense that feel. They want to be a part of that. They, they think 
hey, this is a great place to play my four years and to be a part of this. So, you know, anything with, that we can do externally to help this, then, you know, certainly Coach Brom and his staff has got to provide the product on the field, but we want to present them with the resources and a stadium that's going to provide everything they need. So that's ultimately our job is to create that and create a fan friendly environment where everybody wants to be a part of that every home game and just have a great time with their friends and family and then get in there and have that raucous atmosphere, just like Mackey. So there's nothing better than that. And uh, you know, I've been in the horseshoe and the big house and camp Randall, all those places that can get pretty loud. We want uh, that similar uh, vein and, and Ross aid. Yeah. Mike Babinski talked on golden black live, even back to past back to last December about the idea of potentially of moving the physically moving the stands closer in the North end to make, to build a, to build a, uh, a more intimidating environment. I know it's a moving target in terms of what uh, ends up happening, but there are some, I've seen a little bit of it and heard a little bit about it. Very intriguing in terms of uh, what will be next uh, for Ross Age Stadium. All right, big news on Thursday, obviously. I want to get both of your guys' comments because you're living this on a daily basis. Uh, the Big Ten announces a conference-only schedule. Just uh, there'll be 10 games, uh, and that's uh, trying, to, trying to effectively deal with what we're all dealing with with, with COVID-19. Uh, what was your reaction, Tim? I'll start with you. Just uh, the fact that uh, we still don't know exactly when those games are going to be played. It sounds like they will be played between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. At least that's the hope. And maybe a chance to have two games on, one game off. It depends how that schedule lays out. But what was your, what was your initial uh, thought when you heard that uh, uh, become announced officially yesterday, or on, on Thursday? Uh, appreciation, to be quite honest with you, Alan. Uh, appreciation that our league's presidents and athletic directors were able to come together and devise a plan and that they're doing everything they possibly can to make a football season happen. Um, because it's very important for us and our colleagues in the athletic sport financially. Like, we, we rely so much. The other sports rely so much on the revenue generated by college football, by Purdue football, by Big Ten football, um, in order to exist. It, it's, you know, I know folks think, it, well, it's just a game. And, and trust me, I'm, I have kids. I, I'm, I'm, I want – the safety of our kids is paramount and is of the utmost importance, is priority number one for me. But if there's a way to do this safely, we've got we've to find it. We've got to figure it out. And I just appreciate that we have a group of leaders in our conference that are doing everything they can to figure that out because, again, I, I, it impacts so many people's lives. Um, so I appreciate their willingness to, to, to think outside of the box about how we can still play games, how we can still get people to view games, sponsor games, uh, attend games. Um, and then, you know, excitement about the fact that that means another Big Ten game in ross Aid Stadium as a sports fan, to be quite honest with you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was looking forward to seeing uh, Air Force in Memphis. Um, uh, at Memphis, you know, I was curious to see what they're going to be like with Norvell going to Florida State. And yeah. I know they've got a talented roster. And I worked at a service academy previously, so it's always interesting for me to see the triple option in action. Um, but nothing beats Big Ten football. And so the way I look at it is, you know, we picked up another Big Ten game in ross Aid uh, this fall based on, on, on what they outlined yesterday. And, and I'm, as a fan, pretty excited about that. But really deep appreciation uh, for the fact that, that our folks understand the importance of, of trying to figure out a way to make this happen because it matters so much to so many people's livelihoods. And then I also um, think it matters so much to our community. It just does something for morale when you have a college football season, when people can come together, forget about their worries, and just watch a game and be excited about, you know, 18 to 22 year old kids who are doing the right thing and working their tail off and representing, you know, Purdue University. I, I think our, our society needs it. Uh, if, if it's safe to do it, society needs it in the worst way. Um, I know I do personally. So uh, again, a very, very appreciative that Mitch and Mike and their colleagues did everything they can and are doing everything they can to make it so that we're going to be able to have college sports this fall. Uh, I know it doesn't guarantee anything, anything can happen, but the fact that they're, they're exhausting every resource possible uh, to make it happen means a lot to, to those of us who are a part of this. Yeah, Mark, imagine take yourself back to the fall of 1980 and you look at your senior season and, and something like this comes up. I mean, it takes 
time though. It's going to take six weeks or so for teams to get ready. That's been well documented, but look at it from a player's perspective, Mark. And, and uh, what do you, what do you see in this announcement? Uh, uh, it's a change, but the change is the new constant. Yeah, no question. As a player, you're, you're used to such a routine and, and you know what's ahead of you every day. And, and when the season's coming up, you look at the schedule and you see this, this, and this. And that's not the case right now. And, uh, you know, to the athletic director's credit, uh, Mike Babinski and, and Mitch Daniels, as, as Tim mentioned, uh, every day they've been trying to figure out answers and, uh, and ways that we can make football happen. And if I'm a player, I'm very appreciative of those efforts. And all I want to do is get out there and compete. And if it's, if it's down to 10 Big Ten games, great. Um, I know I'm going to be out there. I'm hopefully going to be able to compete every week. There's some flexibility built in that schedule that uh, who knows. But, uh, you know, as a player, you've got to adjust. Uh, whether you're going on the road, whether you're playing in rain, snow, all those things are part of your competitive makeup. And as long as I know there's a, uh, a little bit of a chance that I'm going to get out there and play in this stadium and on the road, uh, then, I'm, then I'm happy. I'm going to compete like crazy here to get myself ready, to prepare myself. Uh, who knows what each week is going to hold, yeah. but all I'm worried about is that first game and then the next game. And whatever they tell me to do, wherever they tell me to show up, I'm going to do it. So, uh, yeah, see, these aren't ideal circumstances by any means, but – uh, you know, down deep, once you're on that field playing, then it's a whole different story. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that they've come to this conclusion right now. It's very fluid, I'm sure, but uh, at least there's something concrete that we can, you know, hold our uh, hands into and, and get ready for. And so I think our fans appreciate that as well. So, yeah, the lesson I think is now, which I've never been good at, is learning to live in the moment. You know, you yeah. best appreciate the moment and not look too far down the road, but deal with that. Uh, I think that's okay. Parting shots. Uh, uh, I appreciate your time and uh, gone a little bit long, but it's very, very good conversation. Uh, I suppose we could bring beer to this some point in time, but I don't know. <laughs> Tim, uh, parting shot. Good, yeah. Tell me that I, I, I said before the positive, we kind of touched on some of the positives, but give me your, you give me your, uh, uh, your positive story, your parting shot as you look at, uh, look ahead to, to the, not only this project, but what's ahead for Purdue athletics well i just my parting shot is to say thank you to our fan base um because uh, in spite of everything uh we were still able to as a john purdue club uh, raise more money than we did last year uh, overall and for the scholarship fund which is incredible that's it's not going on everywhere else it's not going on, on even on other parts of our campus right now uh our fan base answered the bell this spring i mean i i don't no, people realize it, but those of us in the athletics department do often read the golden black message boards. And there was one um, thread where someone was like, Hey, should I renew my John Purdue club tickets and, and or my John Purdue club membership and my tickets and 49 people, I think responded like I just renewed mine and I upgraded because I know they need it now more than ever. And, you know, I'm going to buy even more tickets. And it, it was humbling. And, and we saw that from so many people. Um, our fans get it. I mean, they just, they just get it. it. I mean, if you want to talk about a positive, our people are smart, they're well-educated, and they care about the cause. And, um, I, I mean, again, I talk to my colleagues uh, all, over the, all over the Big Ten, people doing my job, and all over the country, people doing my job. And it's just not that way everywhere else, you know. And, and so just – Thank you. Because again, we, we were able to, to raise more money than before for our kids and they need it now more than ever before. So, so very appreciative of that. Mark. Yeah. Uh, much like Tim, I, I just want to thank everybody. You know, Purdue fans have been behind me for 40 years and, and I love this group and uh, you know, I, I thank them for their support and, and I'm here for you now. I'm here to do whatever I can to continue to, to help this thing become great. And uh, I think, like I said, everything's in place uh, for that to happen. We've got we've to wade through this tough time, but uh, uh, our fans are terrific. And I've had positive call after positive call after positive call about uh, just what lies ahead and uh, how, can we, how can we help and what can we do and, and how can we – you know, make things better for, for our athletes. So, uh, so that's, you know, that's my great feeling. Um, I, I, I just feel 
really good about uh, what's happening in our athletic department and, uh, you know, whatever we can do as a university to create a positive environment for, for our student athletes. And, uh, and, you know, it's, it's just been a fun three, four months for me, uh, just being able to communicate with our fans and they, they're a terrific group. So, uh, you know, let's, let's get ready for the fall. Let's get excited about it. Uh, there are great things on the horizon. We've got a wonderful staff and team that's going to present a great product. So, you know, boiler up and uh, let's, uh, let's get this thing going in the right direction. All right. Well, this is good sports conversation. We'll, 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 we'll have to do this after week six, after Purdue's gone six and zero and just beat Ohio State and Michigan. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears, Alan. And yeah. Penn State uh, in three consecutive weeks. We don't even know how that schedule's going to play out. But guys, <laughs> always appreciate your time. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, doing this again uh, before long. And we'll hope to see uh, you guys. Uh, we'll see you, but we'll see you maybe in Ross 8 Stadium uh, here, here in the fall. Have a great uh, weekend. Happy birthday, Tim. And uh, yeah, guys, Happy birthday, Tim. Yeah, <laughs> have, have a good one. Thanks so much. <laughs>